Hello, everyone. We're back with, I think, episode 18 of Does This Movie Deserve a Sequel? Maybe 19. 18 or 19. I'm joined once again by Emily DeCicio. Quarantine co-host here to discuss another questionable choice by Andrew Madsen. So I actually gave Emily a lot of choices on this one, and she picked this. So she complains about this movie. She's also partially responsible. Uh, we're talking about The Social Network. Uh, pretty great movie. I, I, I really enjoy it. We'll see what Emily thinks. But uh, we're going to talk about first personal connections. Then best scene, worst scene, best line, casting decisions, nitpicks, and hot takes. So I'll start with Emily. Do you have any personal connections to this film? I actually, this was the second time I watched it. I watched it. The first connection I had with it when I watched it the first time was my brother was her own crew at the time. So it was very cool to see crew athletes. But I'll come back to crew because I thought it was way overdone in this movie. And when I first saw it, I thought, oh, cool. My brother does that. This is interesting. I feel like I'm learning something. But this time I actually watched it with former guest on the show, Jordan, and she had a positive experience about it. And I, I said I could have not watched it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, we'll definitely disagree on this one then. Uh, personal connections for me. I saw this actually when it came out. It was my freshman year of college. And this is when I first got into the Oscars. And the King's Speech beat Social Network for Best Picture, which is aging so badly. And going back and watching the King's Speech is like pulling your teeth out. I'm like, how the hell did this movie win? It's just because it's like old British people. And they're like, oh, I might as well give this movie Best Picture. And that was the first time I got angry with the Oscars, even though it doesn't mean anything. I was like, how did this movie beat Social Network? I thought it was a travesty. So that's one connection. The other, uh, it's directed by David Fincher and written by Aaron Sorkin. And those are two of my favorite like people, I think David Fincher is a great director. So he's done Seven, uh, Gone Girl. He's on, I can't think of him right now, Panic Room. He's probably had like six or seven really great movies. And Aaron Sorkin wrote West Wing, uh, Newsroom. Oh, some of those monologues, I was very impressed with the actors for delivering. And then did you see the little cameo by Aaron, uh, Aaron Sorkin? I don't know what he looks like. So no, who was he? Okay, so he was the... When, they, when Eduardo went to the advertising network in New York, he was one of the advertising execs when Mark Zuckerberg was a real douche. Oh, gotcha. That was yeah, awesome. But yeah, he's done the, he wrote A Few Good Men, which I also love. So he's done a lot of really good movies. I actually have another personal connection. So when Aaron Sorkin, when I first started working at MSNBC, he was just finishing, um, well, he had just worked with a lot of the anchors at MSNBC to see how a newsroom worked and to consult. So a lot of the anchors from there were kind of buddy-buddy with him. So Did you get to meet him? I did not, but one of my anchors was dating him. Nice. Yes. <laughs> That's actually really cool. So fun but fact. yeah, fun fact. I love both of them. It's David Fincher and Aaron Sorkin. If you know anything about them, they're huge perfectionists. This movie probably took a few years to make because uh, David Fincher doesn't even watch his movies because he gets too upset. and It's never a finished product for him. But uh, I'm glad they collaborated, and I thought it was really great. All right, we'll go into best scene. Do you have a favorite scene? Yes, and it also is my favorite quote. It is the scene when Rudy Mar Rudy Mara's character, the future girl with the dragon tattoo, um, when she just – both of the scenes where she just, like, shits on Mark Zuckerberg and just puts him in his place. The initial breakup scene, but then the second scene when she sees him again at the bar. I thought when she just rips him a new asshole and just gives him a reality check that, no, you're an actual douchebag. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, Mark Zuckerberg or Jesse Eisenberg, how he played him just, it actually was so true because I've had to watch working in the news so many of these hearings on Capitol Hill with Jesse I, or Mark Zuckerberg. Um, yeah. And he's such a dick. And he's, you just want to slap him. And I had those same feelings come back to me as I was watching this movie. So I guess the best scene was Mark Zuckerberg. Kind of like how AOC told, there's this great scene, If I don't know if you've seen it. If not, everybody should watch it, of AOC questioning Mark Zuckerberg. And I felt like that with these Rudy Mara scenes of Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, I need to watch those. I... I don't really have a strong opinion about Mark Zuckerberg. I don't watch anything he's in, really. So it's mainly, like, this movie's kind of my opinion of him. 
We actually picked the same scene. I love the opening with Rooney Mara and him. It's so much great banter and dialogue, and it sets up Mark Zuckerberg as like kind of a dick, but you can tell he's a genius, and he's just socially awkward. And the few times I've seen Mark Zuckerberg in clips, I'm like, that's him. Je- Jesse Eisenberg just captured everything about Mark Zuckerberg in a one, like, five-minute scene. Even and it also book. sets up the movie. Yeah. And it sets up the movie, like, why he wants to build this network, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> like, the links will go to do it. <clears throat> so I really like that scene. I, let's see, I wrote a few other ones down. You said you didn't like the crew team, but I, the crew scene, I like the race on the, the, I forgot which river it is in England. The score is great and it's like really intense and it's the only scene like it in the movie. So I thought it was a good transition. Nope. I I thought that's, that's, we're going to come back to that scene, the Henley regatta. Yeah. Um, that was, that was my, I, I thought that scene was completely unnecessary, but we'll come back to it. The other one I really liked was uh, Eduardo when he confronts Justin Timberlake. What's what's his name? Uh, Sean Parker at the end of the movie. <clears throat> There's also some really great dialogue there. And Justin Timberlake's a dickhead in this movie. So I'm glad he finally just gets called out and he does it in, in an explosive way. And you're waiting for Eduardo to just freak out on someone the whole movie because he's just getting played by everyone. And he finally does. And I really enjoyed that scene too. And Andrew Garfield's great. And we'll talk about him later. But yeah, we had the same favorite scene. Though This is, might be... I'll, I'll save it for hot takes, but yeah, I like that scene a lot. The opening with Rooney Mara, which is great. I thought it was excellent. Uh, worst scene. Do you have a least favorite? Oh, okay. I thought I was, well, I think this is nitpick, but I was very annoyed when he ran through the snow in his, his shoes and in the ugly socks and the, but whatever. Um, my least favorite scene, I thought the Winklevoss twin scenes were too long. I thought most of those scenes were unnecessary, too long. They could have been even more tertiary. I think they just wanted to get good-looking people into it. And so uh, Army Hammer was in it a lot. But I just I just thought the scenes with them in it were way too long. Um, another scene, though, I did like, and I forgot to mention, was when the Winklevoss twins got told by Larry Summer, the Harvard president, were like, suck it up, get a cup, and get hit. Like, life sucks, wear a helmet. So I really liked how he treated them because I think that's how we were all feeling and waiting for them, those, like, because you felt they were so entitled. So anyway, my least favorite scene was all the Winklevoss tweens. You didn't like any of them, damn. Most of them, except when they were getting told. It's kind of weird because I guess the way they filmed it is obviously Army Hammer doesn't have a twin or anything. So it's Army Hammer and another dude with a similar build, and they just put his face on this other guy's body, which is kind of strange, but I couldn't tell. Like, I had to look that up, but uh, I, I didn't mind those scenes as much. I do think they dragged a little bit, but I didn't hate them. The, the only ones I didn't like were any scene with uh, Eduardo and Christy. I don't really <gasps> oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, the whole bedroom scene when she, like, went crazy and he lit the stuff on fire. I'm like, this is 100% unnecessary, not needed for this movie. I don't know. If, maybe if it happened in real life, like, okay, but I don't understand Christy's point in this movie. She really has no point. Uh, I didn't like that scene. It was kind of boring. Also, I didn't love Justin Timberlake's The One Night Stand scene with the Stanford girl. I thought it just went on too long. And Justin Timberlake, I have mixed feelings about him in this movie. Some scenes I think he crushes, and some I'm like, oh, it's a little shaky. And this one, he starts off great and by the end of the scene i'm like this is justin timberlake i wish this ended 30 seconds faster just check your email figure out that facebook's open and go talk to mark zuckerberg like, i don't need to hear this girl's backstory agreed and like him yelling from the bathroom just look at her shit stop figure it yeah. out you're sean parker he's worth incidentally i looked this up over two billion dollars billion is he? with a b yeah all right well good for him i guess he made it out but yeah my least favorite scene is Probably Christy and Eduardo. I don't understand why it's in the movie. All right. Best lines. What? All right. You're probably going to have this one. You're probably going to be a very successful computer person, but you're going to go through life thinking girls don't don't like you because you're a nerd. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that won't be true. It'll be because you're an asshole. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And I think that just pierced him to his absolute... N- barely their soul and that influenced so many of his decisions and the trajectory of his life so i loved that line that was my favorite line 
Yeah, you're right. We picked the same one. It's a really good line, and I honestly, I say this every time. I think I wrote down probably 20 lines in this movie. It's really well written, and there's not one scene where I didn't write a line down. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's just great. What I really like about this is you probably disagree. They have a scene, a line at the, the end of the movie where the lawyer girl is just like, oh, you're not an asshole. You just try so hard to be. And I think you're in one of two camps where you believe her or you believe Rooney Mara. I actually believe the the lawyer. I don't think he is an asshole. I think he's just so fucking weird and socially awkward that he'll like play mind games to make everything he does like seem okay. And the way, the reason, at least in the movie, I don't know about Mark Zuckerberg in real life, but in the movie, the way I came to that conclusion is the nightclub scene. There's a really good interaction with Justin Timberlake and, uh, and, uh, Jesse Eisenberg where he gives this story about a girl that the reason he created Napster is to get this girl who was dating a lacrosse player in high school. And then he goes, do you ever think about that girl? And he's like, what girl? And he's like, the one from my high school. And he's like, no. The fact that he asked means like he's still thinking about Rooney and he, he knows what he did was bad. And he has that like consciousness about him, but he just can't admit it because he's like so smug. But I think deep down, he just has this exterior that he's an asshole, but he's actually more considerate than that. No, I just think he's a materialistic prick who needs – you know, to go to Harvard or need to be a part of the Phoenix to feel validation. So I, it's just that part of him where he gets value from himself. His values, I I inherently hate. No, I get that. And I think he's supposed to be a complicated character. So he, you, you can see either side. There's definitely not like a right answer to that. I wrote down a bunch of other lines. I'm just going to go through because yeah. I just love it so much. Uh the when Chris the, the scene where Chrissy and Edward are fighting, even though I didn't like it, and she's like, "You think I'm an idiot? You didn't know how to change your relationship status on Facebook, and you were like an owner? Uh, uh, it's a little embarrassing. So you should take it as a sign of trust that I told you that." I just thought it was really funny because she's clearly crazy and gonna like fuck him up, and he has just a great witty one liner when she's freaking out on him. I thought that was pretty funny. The fact that he thought of those, I did think that in my head. I'm like, as he's going, I'm like, that's a great. I wish you, those are the lines you wish you have in your head when you're in a fight with somebody. Yeah, you go back and like, I wish I said that. That would have been really cool. <laughs> uh, another one is Eduardo again. I'm not coming back for 30%. I'm coming back for everything. That was just a great way to end that scene because he probably deserves everything. He was the one who fronted the money and would have never got off the ground without him. And he got screwed out of all of it. So I, I like that. And he finally showed a backbone. Uh, right, literally right after that. Uh, I like standing next to you, Sean. It makes me feel so tough. He's just roasting everyone in the room. It's great. <laughs> I, I, I like Ed Water a lot in this movie. I really do, too. I wanted to see Justin Timberlake get punched. Even if it didn't happen in real life, I thought it would have been a nice movie flourish. Yeah, he definitely deserved it. I crossed out probably 20. The last other one I said, uh, when they asked Mark about, or uh, Jesse Eisenberg... Mark Zuckerberg about the Phoenix Club and why you want to join, like because they're fun and exclusive and lead to a better life. That's just such a weird answer and something that I feel like Mark Zuckerberg would say. And you have to be a really shallow person to believe that. And the fact that he does is kind of mind blowing. I feel like though the elite elitism is so real because I went to an Ivy League and I feel like I felt a lot of that where it was just about. What internship are you doing? Where you where you go? And always feeling insecure about this ranking, and it just it rang true, and I absolutely detested it. You're like Ron Summer Camp. <laughs> yep, tennis. that's all. That's nice. all I need. Cool. But yeah, I will say this is a really <clears throat> well written movie, and there I could have written down so many lines. I was I had two pages worth of them, and I had to cross them out. But we'll go to casting decisions. Who would you cast in this movie? Well. No surprise to you, I'm casting all women. But I would put Eduardo as Natalie Portman, Mark Zuckerberg as Dakota. Did she go to Harvard? Yes, she did. Okay. And I think she was the actress that they were referring to. I think. Oh, she probably was there in 2000. Actually, no, she must have graduated by then, right? I don't think so. No, I think that's about the time. So I think that's who they're referring to. So, but I would definitely put her as Eduardo. She's also Jewish, so it would totally work for Jewish frat. Mark Zuckerberg, I'd put Dakota Johnson, the one who's in the Fifty Shades of Grey movie. Also, incidentally, she was the girl that Sean Parker was sleeping with in that whole scene. She played that the girl that you didn't want the backstory of. Amy. 
Yeah. Why didn't they say Dakota? I know. So she, Dakota Johnson, because I think she has like that, that kind of, like you don't like her, but you do sense to her. And I think she'd be an effective Mark Zuckerberg. The Winklevoss twins, I put as Rebecca Romain. Yeah. <laughs> they right. wrote through though. Yeah. But she's she's strong. She was uh what's the blue character in X-Men? Uh Misty. Yeah. She she could she could row the fuck out of a boat. Um and then Sean Parker I'd put as Ruby Rose. What's she in? She was that woman on CW. She's been oh. in a lot of shows. <laughs> anyway, she's a she's tattooed, she's a lesbian icon. But I thought she'd make a great Sean Parker. Is her name actually Ruby Rose? That's, sound, that's the most fictionalized name I've ever heard. Yes, it is. Great name for a character in one of your books. I wrote a book a few years ago, and it was an actress was in it, and her last name is Rose. I mean, she changed it to Rose. <laughs> I didn't know about Ruby Rose. Yeah, so those are my characters. You're welcome, audience, for them being better than Andrew's. And I haven't even heard his yet. Andrew, what are they yours? All... <laughs> They're all women. I have. I thought about this for a long time. All right, the hardest one is Jesse Eisenberg as Zuckerberg, because I can't imagine anyone else playing Mark. He looks like him. He does a great job. Uh, he if, every time I see him in another movie, I'm like, that's Mark Zuckerberg. I'm like, that's not even him though. That's he was playing Mark Zuckerberg. But uh, he was so good in that role. The only one I could think of, and it would be a worse movie, but Michael Sarah could kind of do it, but it would not be as good. I agree with you. Uh, Andrew Garfield. I really like this one. So he's Eduardo. He has to look kind of ethnic, but also you can tell he's really smart and he'd still get along with a bunch of white people. So I said Rami Malek. I think would be really good Eduardo. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Is he good looking and like... Yeah, okay. I can see him being likable enough and like suave. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think Rami Malek can be suave. He's very exotic looking, but he's also the same age. So like all I casted these by age too during the time of the film. So I, I spent a lot of time looking into this. Uh, Army Hammer. This one I thought was pretty easy. Uh, Chris Hemsworth. This comes out the year before Thor. He's already a big blonde dude. He could definitely row. I could see him being really pretentious. He's not famous yet, so it's his breaking out role. I think I think he'd be really good in that. I like that. I'm, I'll cherish you, even though I would like Rebecca Romaine better. But I'll cherish you. I like Rebecca Romaine better, too. <laughs> uh, Justin Timberlake. Uh, he pretty much did this recently. Bradley Cooper. So he, uh, what's that fucking movie called that he was just in? It was really famous. The Lady Gaga. Sha- uh, oh my god. Something. Something a Star is Born. A, yes. Yeah, so I think he has that charisma about him, the entertainer within him to pull this off. He's pretty famous by now, but I, I still think he could do a good job. And he's, so, he's someone that you would idolize. Like, this guy's got it going on. I want to follow his move, even if he's made mistakes. And he has a total douchiness about him. Yeah, like Wedding Crashers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> small time. Uh, Rooney Mara, her role. She's really good in this, and I don't know why she's not. She's pretty famous now, but I thought her career should have exploded after this movie. And I guess her sister kind of cannibalized some of the roles, but she's really good. I wish she was in more. She's in Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, where she totally killed it. Yeah. She's great. She's in Side Effects. Have you ever seen that? Yes. That's pretty good. I like that movie a lot. Uh, but yeah, so I said this is 2010 before either of them were that famous. Jennifer Lawrence, I think, could have done a good job. This is right when, I think, Winner's Bone or whatever the hell the movie is came out the year before the Hunger Games. She was my second choice for Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, she's too good looking to be Mark Zuckerberg. Still. I'd be like, you're not a nerd. <laughs> Don't lie to me. Uh, the other one for that was Brie Larson. I also think could have been really good as Rooney Mara in the opening scene. I like her as my Mark Zuckerberg, too. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rashida Jones. She's not in it very much, but she kind of bugged me in this movie. Uh, I just had Felicity Jones. I think she's a really good actress, and I can believe she is a lawyer, and I think she would be more professional than Rashida, which would not make those scenes as awkward as they are. I believe she played Ruth Bader Ginsburg, so totally, I love, that is my favorite casting that you've chosen for this movie oh. so far. I only have one more. I wrote down Asian dude, and I actually looked up his name. Max Minghella, so he's uh, Army Hammer's friend. H- Henry Golding, I think, could have played that role. He's in Handmaid's like, Tale. I was so excited to see him, because I'm obsessed with Handmaid's Tale, and he's one of the main characters, so... 
my sister told me that. I, I was like, why is this guy not in more movies? He's really good in this role. And she's like, he's in Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't watch Handmaid's Tale, but yeah, Henry Golding would have, he could be a fratty Harvard douche and he would hang out with Army Hammer for sure. Agree. That's my last one. All right. That was cool. Nitpicks. You have any nitpicks? Yeah. Make all the crew scenes freaking shorter. Again, I, I thought the whole scene on the whole regatta was stupid and way too long. Um, I get the Did nice. You get the though? Yeah, I totally get it. But I just thought, okay, cool. Like the army hammer looks super great on a boat. Like, but I, I don't think we needed it. Um, what else? I just, oh, I thought, actually, I'll save that. Um, and then again, I thought the whole, every interaction with Eduardo and his girlfriend were, too long and unnecessary. Maybe they wanted to make Brenda Strong a bigger character because she was well known because of the Disney Channel, but is that the actress? Yes. Okay. Why was she in the Disney Channel? Who is she? I don't remember what she played, but she was. Okay. Interesting. Is that all you have? That's the only okay. things you didn't like. Yes. All right. I'll run through mine because I wrote down a lot. Uh, the Mara sister is dating Zuckerberg in the first place. When did that happen? Great point. She's <laughs> way too... And the fact that he's wearing, like, a Gap sweatshirt, I'm like, that's very middle school. Yeah, it's like something I would do. <laughs> I'm like, you should probably take your sweatshirt off. I think, though, even you, freshman year, would be like, I'm not going to. Yeah. If I was going on a date, I wouldn't wear a hoodie. No, you... I I know this for a fact. You would not do that. So... Yeah. And, and again, dating Rooney Mara... Yeah, but like, we gotta make a good impression here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good job. Uh, second one. So, you went to an Ivy League school. You can let me know if this isn't true. I feel like Harvard isn't this cool, and Harvard parties aren't this cool, even the club stuff. I can tell you for sure, at Ivy Leagues, most people are very, very unattractive. So, it makes sense in a frat that there's some good looking people, but not that many. It's incorrect, and the girls are not that hot. They're making it look like a Miami Vice like, club yep, scene is ridiculous. I know you're trying to make the clubs look great because Mark Zuckerberg aspires to be in one, but I don't think that's what Harvard parties look like. So. You are correct. Cool. Uh, Justin Timberlake is a shaky actor. I can't decide if I like him or not in this movie because there's some scenes he's great, like I said before. I think he needs to be in this movie 20% less. It would have been perfect. I agree. I think he could have been in it less. I think they wanted to give Justin Timberlake a bigger chance. I think they he nailed it with the cockiness because that's yeah. inherently he plays that great. And he has that swagger and confidence. But I just didn't think he was necessary in it. Yeah, there's some scenes where he just didn't need to be there. But uh, too many courtroom scenes. So I'm not a huge proponent of jumping back and forth in narratives. I think it's kind of a trope and it's kind of annoying because so many films do it now. They did it brilliantly, but there are a little too many jumps where I wish that they could have done it three or four times. They did it probably 15 times. Agreed. And between two court scenes, which I agree. Yeah. I think there's a better way of telling the story than just talking to like a litigator. But uh, what else? The drunk coding contest is kind of stupid. And I don't think they'd actually do that. They're just trying to make Harvard look cool. I'm like, you guys didn't do that. Yeah, or they're nerds trying to be cool, so they did it and went too over the top. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rashida Jones is too much of a fanboy. I couldn't believe her as a lawyer, because she's just like, 22,000 hits, wow! She's like, oh, I got salad, no, I do want to hang out. Like, what are you doing? I don't know, I didn't believe her as a character. Yeah, during that scene, I think Jordan and I both looked at each other and were like, what? But, yeah. So we I, agree. We agree, I, I didn't love that. Uh, Harvard President Summers, he's too much of a dick in the scene he's in. I don't know him personally. You probably know more about him. Is he, like, that much of an asshole? Completely viable from what he said and just completely disregarding. He's been at high levels of the government. He didn't have time for Winklevi, even if they're Olympic athletes. Winklevi? That scene I liked a lot, though, because I actually kind of sided with the Winklevi, but it's just they're such assholes that it's tough to side with them, but I thought the points they were making merited having that meeting and he was just so dismissive I don't right know. He, he bugged me too he's uh, part of the same elitist class oh yeah like you guys shut up your students how can a student be talking to me which is inherently wrong 
because every student, because they pay a tuition, they have a right to speak to him. But I just hated the Winklevoss twins and felt they were entitled pricks, and I liked seeing them get taken down a notch. Yeah. I loved how they, one of my other favorite lines is when he rips off the doorknob. He's like, oh, it's broke a 400 year doorknob, <laughs> throws it on the ground. That was but great. I like that. Uh, the last two, Eduardo signing the document without knowing what it says. I feel like he's too smart to do that. I think Zuckerberg is kind of a snake. <laughs> so, like, maybe just make sure you're not screwing yourself. Uh, last one, the Palo Alto house right across the street from uh, Sean Parker. Did, was that intentional? Did he know where Sean Parker was living and just buy that house? That's kind of unrealistic that, A, they were across the street, and he was just walking some girl out and saw him. I think Sean Parker weaseled his way in. Oh, I think because he was like, oh, yeah, I was at this girl's house who I just happened to be sleeping with, and we saw that thing happen. I think I think Sean Parker's a weasel. That's actually a better theory, because I thought it might have been discreetly uh, Zuckerberg just moving across the street because he loved Sean Parker, but I think that makes more sense because his career was kind of in the dumps right there. Yeah. Cool. Last section, hot takes. Do you have any? Yeah. Uh, I think Zuckerberg was, still, was a virgin. Throughout this whole movie. Um, I think a lot of it was due to the fact that he was wearing pool shoes with socks. <laughs> um, and there, it was egregious. Um, okay. I have a question. So do you think high school villains or college villains were their meanest in the 2000s when this movie was made or the 80s? Because I feel like there's a particular punch between villains like, you know, Karate Kid and then now, in the 2000s, like Mean Girls and, and Social Network, and where they're just evil. And I, I that evilness, do you, what do you think? 80s or 2000s? Early so you're 2000s. skipping over 90s, and I think the 90s are the most cartoonishly evil, okay. which is great, because they're all the same exact person. Yeah. Uh, probably the 80s, because they almost, there's a scene in Karate Kid where they run him off the road when he's on his bike. And I'm like, that, you could have killed him. Like, he literally could have died right there. Yeah. And they're just like, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah. ha. I'm like, what? <laughs> and this, this movie is made in the 80s. It's based in the 50s. But you've seen Stand By Me, right? Yeah. Or uh, Kiefer Sutherland is just like a homicidal maniac. He doesn't actually kill anyone, but he's on the verge of killing several people. And he's just so close to being a murderer. I'm like, is this a bully? Or is he, should we be really, really worried about him? Yeah. So we go with the 80s. Okay, yeah. So if automatic weapons were prevalent then he would definitely be a, a fit the profile for a school shooter okay yeah okay i just had that question because they're really mean but who would you say is the biggest bully in this movie mark zuckerberg i think is evil but i think also like the frat bros they just look very like brock turner date rapey yeah this is pre Brock Turner too, so maybe, yeah. maybe he patterned himself after them. Right. So I guess those are my biggest hot takes. Um, and also, again, I, I think they were just trying to show off how good Army, how good looking Army Hammer was. I don't think a lot of those scenes were necessary. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how good the Winklevoss looks in real life. They're not uh, as good they... looking as Army Hammer. I did okay. a double check. Uh, Same with yeah, Sean they, Parker, not probably, as good looking as Justin Timberlake. I was like, there's no way Sean Parker looks like Justin Timberlake. I refuse Absolutely. to believe that. Yeah. My hot takes. So you're definitely going to disagree with this. Is this the best movie of the 2010s? Past decade. No, Bridesmaids, but continue. Okay. So the my top three, I think, are this, Ex Machina, and Whiplash. I thought all th three of those movies are really great. But uh, this movie is very rewatchable. Re this is probably my fourth time seeing it, and I still just love it. But yeah, all right, we just no wait, Slumdog Millionaire. That was I think two thousand eight. Okay, all right, continue. Okay. Uh, Facebook was that the biggest invention of the two thousands of this century, and why does it suck now? Right, because I think old people got on it. It it got that non-young thing and then I think when grandmas and old people that's like their method of going when I need to look for a guest and they're between the age of mid 40s to 65 I find them on Facebook that's a problem 
it's really weird because this movie they keep talking about how cool it was and i guess it was when it came out but now it's obviously not that and it's very strange just watching it now <laughs> there was a time where like changing your facebook status if you were in a relationship was a big thing but now yeah. i don't think even people notice i don't know can you even do that can you even, like, poke people anymore or write on their wall? Is that a I thing? I don't think you can poke people anymore. Writing on your wall, I think right now it only exists during birthdays. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely gone downhill. But, it's, yeah, that was a thought. Uh, oh, my last one. Or, I have two more, actually. So, for our last pod, or two pods ago, Talented Mr. Ripley, I thought Tom Ripley was the best impersonization of, like, imposter syndrome. I think it might actually be Zuckerberg. What do you think? I actually highly agree with you because he's wanting to, yes, because he's wanting to be and embody something that he is very much not and create this world where he is the most popular person because he is the creator. I like that a lot. I love that hot take. Thank you. Yeah, the fact that he's so bugged about Eduardo getting into the Phoenix Club even after he says, like, I have enough money to put it, like, in my ping pong room and, like, it, that's why... You're driven to do all this, though, because they didn't want you. Right. Like, what does that say about you? <laughs> Agreed. I love that hot take. Thank you. Last one. Uh, so I wrote this down as we were going through it, because we both love the first scene. Is this the best opening scene to a movie ever? I was going to say to a show, Orange is the New Black has one of the best opening scenes. But this is a great opening scene in a movie. It gets you right in. I was thinking, like, The Godfather. I'm like, I believe in America. That's a great opening scene. The way it's shot. I, I couldn't think of other ones just off the top of my head, but this one's really good. As we watch movies, I'm going to now think of that. So, I, I, I like that hot take. To be, TBD for that. Oh, the opening of uh, Inglorious Bastards with uh, the German... What's oh, his the, name? Christoph that, Walt, Waltz. Just being like, are you hiding Jews here? That it takes like 15 minutes, but it's great. That's a great one. I don't. I won't say it is the best ever, but the opening scene just gets you hooked. If you didn't want to watch this movie before, like you're gonna to want to watch it after that. Agree. Agree. Okay, so TBD. TBD. That was my last one. Andrew, this was this was a fun podcast. This was. We gotta do another one soon. It needs to be a happy one. Yes, it does. We need to make this coronavirus. A a happy moment. Let people truly forget. Although, I think this conversation will make them forget about the situation that we're in. You're welcome yep. for reminding you. If you just listen to this pod, all your problems will be solved. But uh, we'll be back soon with another movie. Let us know if there's anything you want to talk about. Uh, until next time, have, have a good night. Have a good week. Awesome.